Hello and welcome back to the Shiki Science Show. So today we'll be addressing the question, what are the antagonistic hallmarks of ageing? So for the past few videos now, I've been talking about the different hallmarks of ageing. And these different hallmarks have been characterised by this review paper into three different categories. Um, so firstly, you have the primary causes of damage. Secondly, you've got the antagonistic hallmarks, which we'll look at in this video. And lastly are the integrative hallmarks that we'll talk about in the next video. So yeah, in this video, we'll look at the antagonistic hallmarks. But what does antagonistic hallmarks even mean? So in the context of ageing, whilst the primary causes are the primary causes of damage, the antagonistic hallmarks are responding to the damage. And whilst the primary causes of damage are bad, the antagonistic hallmarks can be positive or negative depending on the context or how intense the response is. So these hallmarks are there to protect the organism from damaging situations However, when their response is too intense, that's when it can promote ageing. So first up on our list is nutrient signalling dysregulation. So nutrient signalling is pretty much essential for a cell slash organism to live. It's when nutrient signalling is too high or deregulated that it can promote the ageing phenotype. And so much understanding for the involvement of the nutrient signalling pathways in ageing have come to light from genetic mutations in genes involved in these pathways that when mutated either alter the lifespan or the health span of the organism. So what are these pathways? So I'll give you a simplified overview. So a key nutrient signaling pathway is the insulin or the IGF-1 nutrient signaling pathway. And so the aim of this pathway is to activate processes in the cell that will stimulate growth. So as you can see that I've drawn out here, the insulin or IGF-1 will bind to its receptor at the membrane of the cell. And this triggers an internal response that activates AKT. And so AKT is a kinase and this phosphorylates a protein called FOXO. And FOXO is a transcription factor that will activate genes involved in stress resistance, not growth. And so when it gets phosphorylated by AKT, it can no longer get into the nucleus where it's needed to act as a transcription factor. Therefore, growth pathways are activated instead of autophagy or the stress resistance pathways. So two key genetic mutations that strongly affect uh, aging are seen in IGF-1 receptor, also known as DAF2 in C. elegans, and FOXO, also known as DAF16 in C. elegans. And now remember that C. elegans are basically worms. And so DAF2, when it's mutated, prolongs lifespan, whilst when DAF16 is mutated, it reduces lifespan and hence it promotes ageing. So the key thing to get from this diagram is that when you increase the signaling response, you're going to inhibit FOXO and this is going to increase the rate of aging. And so part of this is a reduced rate of autophagy. So autophagy is a cellular recycling process, effectively it's self-digestion of damaged organelles and proteins that are inside the cell. And this system acts to protect cellular integrity and function. Therefore, if you reduce the rate of autophagy, it can accelerate the aging process. So to kind of summarize where we've got up to so far, the role of the antagonistic hallmarks, so in this case, nutrient signaling dysregulation, it acts to accelerate the primary causes of aging, as you can see here. All right, so next up is mitochondrial dysregulation. So to understand the involvement of mitochondrial dysregulation in the aging process, firstly, we need to ask the question as to, well, what do the mitochondria even do? So the mitochondria or organelles in the cell that carry out oxidative phosphorylation and this is a process that is used to make ATP slash the energy source for the cell and so there are kind of three different categories of how this regulation of the mitochondria could contribute to aging. The first of these is the free radical theory of aging which is related to the production of reactive oxygen species. The second is the accumulation of DNA mutations specifically in the mitochondrial DNA 
And lastly, it's the bioenergetic decline. So the fact that over time, the mitochondria make less ATP and therefore there's less energy for the cell. And therefore this reduction in function can result in the aging process. But what is the evidence for all this? So as with the other antagonistic hallmarks, they are thought to be beneficial at homeostatic levels in the cell. But when they have too high an intensity, they can be damaging for the cell. So for example, with the reactive oxygen species, there have been evidence in support of the presence of reactive oxygen species promoting ageing, but also the reverse, that we need it to prevent ageing. And that's because um, there is evidence that the reactive oxygen species are signalling stress and they actually activate the survival responses. But the problem is when you have too much of the oxidative species, it can actually cause more damage and more damage can actually advance the ageing process. So, for example, there is evidence that increased reactive oxygen species may actually prolong lifespan in yeast and worms. So, bottom line, the situation is a little bit complex. But so, next up is the accumulation of mutations in the mitochondrial DNA. So, I gave an example in a previous video whereby a mutated DNA polymerase resulted in increased accumulation of mutations and this reduced the lifespan of the mice. So, in addition to the accumulation of mutations, Defective bioenergetics in the mitochondria can also occur over time because of oxidation of the mitochondrial proteins that reduce their function and also destabilisation of the respiratory chain, which is what generates the ATP, because when it gets destabilised, it can increase the production of reactive oxygen species. So these three different categories are like highly overlap, but the key thing is that mitochondrial dysregulation does seem to be involved with the ageing process. So the last antagonistic hallmark is cellular senescence. So cellular senescence is defined as being a stable cell cycle arrest of the cell, whereby it no longer divides. And in addition to this cell cycle arrest, it is coupled with a secretory phenotype referred to as the senescence associated secretory phenotype, or the SASP, which is much easier to say. So the first characterization of senescence was replicated senescence. And that was described by Hayflick. And so what he noticed was that over time, after several cell divisions, the human fibroblasts stopped growing. And the explanation for this loss of cell division was due to telomere attrition, which, as I explained before, telomeres are kind of like the shoe caps on chromosomes. And so when they shorten, you lose the integrity of the chromosomes. So the kind of protective thing for a cell to do, right, is to stop dividing and to prevent the accumulation of even more damage in the DNA, which can result in ageing. So this is the beneficial side to senescence. But senescence doesn't only occur through replicative senescence, it can also occur due to damage accumulation in other areas of the DNA. Alternatively, derepression of the INC4 alpha locus, which is a locus that encodes genes that promote cell cycle arrest, can also promote senescence. But there are actually many different ways that you can cause senescence of a cell and senescence also has many outputs that can vary depending on the cellular context. So how does senescence cause aging? So we already know that telomere attrition um, increases during aging but both damage elsewhere and derepression of the ink for our locus are both processes that happen chronically throughout lifespan. But still, in terms of how senescence actually promotes the ageing process, what is it that's critical about it? And so the key feature, um, or at least part of the key feature, is the secretion of these molecules known as the SASP. So at low levels, the SASP can actually be considered beneficial because it brings in and recruits the immune system that can bring the cells to sites of damage in the body, and this can help to repair the sites of damage. However, at high levels, the SASP can have deleterious effects for the cell and the surrounding tissue. For example, it can increase the inflammation in that tissue, and this can reduce tissue function. And also, if senescence occurs in stem cells, which are needed for repair, it can also affect the regeneration of the tissue, which are all pro-aging factors. So yeah, as I've said before, this review paper is really good if you want more detail. But hopefully this video has given you an overview as to the antagonistic hallmarks in the hallmarks of aging.